Shannon here and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to share a planner walkthrough. Um, I actually, let me grab it. I actually use a calendar, I guess you'd call it. It's from uh, Blue Sky and it is a monthly weekly calendar. And I use this for my day-to-day -day tasks and my monthly planning. Um, so here I have all of my appointments and personal deadlines and such. And then on the daily, I just list out all the things I want to get done on that day. And truth be told, at the end of the day, if I don't feel like I've done very much, well, I think back and I think, okay, I, I know I didn't sit around and do nothing. And I actually will write in some of the things at the end of the day that I did that might not have made it into my calendar because my goal at the end of the day is to see each section full. Why? I want to make sure that I am using the time that I have not only wisely but to its fullest, to its greatest potential. And so that just pleases me. Every night I sit down and I look at the tasks I did and then I make my list for the upcoming day. So my poor husband, I sometimes I refer to it as agenda, sometimes a planner, sometimes my calendar, and he, bless his heart, cannot keep them straight because I, I use the words interchangeably. But I use this, I'm going to call it a plan or a calendar or an agenda to manage my time. I plan my time with this. However, this is what I use to plan my projects, to keep everything straight. And for me personally, I am really trying to give three areas of my personal career a goal, or excuse me, a go. I am, one, writing a fiction book for the first time, so that is a major goal I have. I am trying to get my Etsy shop going again. I had really great sales for a couple years and then it just really has gone by the wayside. Um, maybe because I haven't been doing much with it. And three, I'm working on this, my YouTube channel. And so those are three major projects and I have devoted this planner to that. And so I'm gonna refer to this as my planner. My husband knows it as my little blue binder. <laughs> But what is this, first of all? This is nothing more than a mini better binder from Staples. It's the small uh, five and a half by eight and a half, half size or classic size is what it would equate to um, with a Franklin Covey binder or planner. So, and then this is just a cover that I had, I invested, this was not cheap. The binder itself is just a white binder, again, from Staples. And I think this cost me 10 bucks but I bought it years ago, so I just had it, but you can still get these, and they come in all different colors. You don't need the fancy cover. I just like it because it's my favorite color. It's actually coming across this blue on the screen. It's actually a uh, like a sea glass or a, a teal or a foam color, sea foam. But I custom ordered this off of Etsy. Um, a gal makes Bible covers, and I thought, ooh, those are gorgeous. I want one of those for my, my binder. <laughs> <laughs> and so I sent her the measurements and it works out great. It just slides, the cover slides in. It's fabric on the inside, but it's a um, PU, a, a synthetic plastic. It's not leather or anything like that. So I think, again, gasp, this was really expensive. I think I spent after shipping about 50 bucks for this. But um, it's gorgeous. It makes me happy. And you know what? People spend a lot more than that on things that they use for a year and throw away. And this should last me a good long time. This is nothing more than a piece of one inch uh, elastic that I got at a local craft store, Joanne. I got this too. This was a trim that I just added. I, I sewed it on there. So what I did is I took a bit of the elastic, wrapped it around my binder cover to get the right length and then stitched it together, and then just added the flowers. Not only do I like how it looks, it serves a very practical purpose. Let me show you what it does. If I wanna take my binder and my calendar and I wanna go work somewhere else, whether at home somewhere or out and about, there, it's all together, this binder 
or this, excuse me, this, uh, what, what would you call this? A wrap, I guess. There we go. Um, strap. <laughs> I just wanted a way to keep my calendar in there so it wouldn't go flying so that I could just pick up and go and it was all together neat and tidy. So that's what that is. Love that. But let's go ahead and dive into the binder itself. And as I give you a quick tour, I'm going to give you some tips and tricks and ideas that I came up with that helps me be more uh, productive and just makes using my planner that much more enjoyable. This is nothing but a little notebook. I like having paper at the very front to just jot notes or ideas on that I used dot, glue dots, not permanent glue dots, but removable. And I literally attached the cardboard on the back of the notebook onto a piece of plastic that came from a notebook that I used up. You know those notebooks with poly or plastic covers? I saved those <laughs> and I use them for other things. And so I cut it down to size with my paper cutter and then hole punched it to match the um, three holes, the three binder rings here in my planner. And then literally just used glue dots to attach this. So makes a nice little, I think Franklin Covey, he actually had something called a swing pad and it was really expensive. It was years ago and I kind of, I love that, but it was too pricey. So I came up with this idea on my own and it's just incredibly handy. This is just a little sticker that I got off Etsy that I laminated and again used removable glue dots to attach it here because I think it's cute. This is just a little pocket pouch and actually these are notes that I take randomly throughout the day or while I'm on the go. It might be ideas for uh, YouTube videos, might be ideas for different chapters of my book. It can be anything, but this is like a catch-all and I shove the note in here so I don't lose it. And then later on in the day or later on in the week, I set aside time to go through these and then I put the information where it needs to be in my planner binder. This is just a little pocket, the little slider opening reseal, resealable thing. And again, I have some small paper in here for notes and then some post-it notes. I love this for a quick tick list. If I'm feeling overwhelmed with a project or whatever, I pull out a sheet of this little paper and then I break it down into small steps. The fact that it's got rainbow dots makes it fun to look at, which helps motivate me and, and, and makes, what is it? Uh, sugar makes the medicine go down. Color helps me uh, feel better when I'm doing stuff I don't really want to be doing. And if you've been watching any of my other ch other videos on this channel, I used to use a writing folder. And the front of the writing folder had a bunch of stickers to motivate me that I had laminated and slipped into the front of the, the folder. Oh, I love that system. But here's the thing. I realized that it was, it was encouraging me to procrastinate. I loved being in that folder and writing on that notebook paper and just using that folder so much that I was using it a little too much and it was helping, it was preventing me from actually getting on the computer and writing and pounding out the words. And so I decided, okay, this, this is a little too comfortable. I needed to make myself a little more uncomfortable writing by hand so that I would actually force myself to get on the computer. So I went down to this smaller size and I'm liking it because it forces me to just jot ideas down, quickly outline, and not actually write out chapters by hand. So I'm not doing the work twice. But I missed my stickers. So I got a couple other stickers off of Etsy and then had it, I laminated it with my laminator, cut it down to size, punched it, and put it in my notebook here. This you might have seen before in another video. This is a little note that my son, oh, 2013, that is what, a long time ago. <laughs> my son, when he was in the third grade, slipped this note on my desk. So when I came home after dropping him off from school, or to school, I found this. Mama, if you're reading this, I'm thinking of you. Love, Nate. So I just loved it in the moment, and the best thing I ever did was laminate it so I could always have it because he did this when he was eight, and he's now 19, and oh, I just love having that. It's a reminder to me. Um that I'm not just a writer and I'm not just chasing after my other goals, but I am a mama too. And then this was something written by Mark. My, my son with special needs. I did my homework. I filled 
blanks bucket by and he couldn't he can't write um he can't spell but he gave this to me and he told me he was filling my bucket and he told me that the heart meant that he loved me and so mark did this in the third grade he was eight years old so look at the difference there um anyway just reminds me that my sons both love me and show it in different ways now my goal has been, my personal goal has been to write a fiction book specifically for middle grade, which is upper elementary kids. And I wanted a visual reminder of what that kid is like. Who am I writing for? What is, who is my intended audience? And so I went through and found some of my favorite pictures of my son, Nate, at that age. So here's Nate at 10 years old. Oh, he loved Rick Rorden. He just devoured those books. Here's my husband, Jason and here's Nate again. So these are my favorite pictures of Nate. He was just a ferocious reader at that age. And so that's who I'm writing for. Truth be told, I have this picture laminated sitting underneath my computer monitor too so that when I'm writing my book, I'm reminded this this right here is who I'm writing for. So I that's just been really helpful to me. Next, I recognized that I needed to educate myself. I'm not a fiction writer. I am a curriculum writer. I write for children and and adults, teachers, yes, but I've never written fiction before. So I made myself, after watching many, many videos, reading many books on the craft, made myself a little guide on the three-act story structure, and then also um, came up with this list about how to really craft a well-rounded protagonist. Now, I'm going to be really frank. I'm writing for middle grade fiction. So my books, my my writing can't be, should not be too overly complicated. Um, so this might be very simplistic if you write for YA or adults. But for me, it's been very helpful in writing my book. And next, I have watched several books off or not excuse me i've watched several videos on the read z youtube channel i'll leave a link to it below but in fact i'm just trying and find the link to this video this gal did an awesome video i think it was on 10 or 12 of the best writing tips that she ever received and so i literally uh took screenshots when certain tips came on the screen and then i put them um into a Word doc, printed it, trimmed it down, and laminated it to remind myself, specifically when I'm writing and when I'm editing, how to make my writing better. Okay, so that's the front part of the binder of my planner. But let's get into this stuff because I think hopefully this has the most amount of tips that might be helpful to other people like you. I love wide ruled paper. I loathe college ruled. I loathe narrow ruled. So they don't sell wide ruled paper for planners. They have grid, they have graph, they have regular, you know, narrow ruled, but they have blank, but not, um, not wide ruled. So what did I do? I took a crap ton of wide ruled notebook paper to my local office supply store. And specifically, I go to an Office Depot, Office Max location. You could call ahead if you've got a Staples near you. What you're going to want to do is find somebody, if you want to do what I did, you need to find somebody who has trimmers that will cut. And so I took, oh gosh, it must have been a thousand sheets of paper to Office Depot and they charge by the cut, not by the sheet. And I had them cut. Oh, actually I took a piece of cardboard, the exact same size that would match or fit my binder. And I had them cut the paper. It was two cuts, one, two. And then I brought it home and then I three hole punched it. I actually have an Aco vintage heavy duty uh, paper puncher that I moved the punchers to fit my exact binder. And if you go thrift store shopping, you can find heavy duty three hole punches there for, I don't at my store, anywhere from $2.99 to $4.99. Um, if you're really desperate or really want a good one, you can get them used off eBay. I, again, like the ACO. It's A-C-C-O. And it was really easy for me. One night, I literally hole-punched over a 1,000 pages. And now I am well-stocked with wide-ruled <laughs> paper for my planner, which I love. So, you know what? Uh, don't make do, make better. So, if you're a wide-ruled fanatic, um, I hope that helps you. 
Next, I have developed a color code system. Why? Because I love colors um, for my different areas. I use blue for my book, book planning and writing. I use orange for Etsy because that is the color of, of Etsy. I use red for YouTube ideas because why? Well, that's YouTube, uh, their brand color. And then I don't have anything currently in these two sections, but my yellow section is planning in general, like future goals, quarterly goals, things of that sort. But I wanted to point out, you'll see I have a tab up here and I have six tabs along the bottom here. These I made and I will leave a link below to the actual tab set that I used because it was fairly inexpensive. It was certainly less than five bucks. It was for regular eight and a half by 11 size paper. And what I did is I took that same piece of cardboard, that eight and a half by five and a half piece of cardboard, and I trimmed, first of all, I trimmed them um, in portrait mode. I trimmed off the extra size on the, on the left-hand side of each divider so that I had the correct width. So all the dividers were trimmed to five and a half inches wide. And then what I did is I started to organize the colors in the in the right order that I wanted and then trimmed off the excess length so that eventually all of them were eight and a half by five and a half. And then again, just took it to my trusted little echo hole punch and punched them. And voila, I had six colorful, cheap, beautiful, um, divider tabs that I could use in my binder. And then I had some extras because it was, I believe it was a 10 or a 12 divider set. And I didn't have space for any more going horizontally, but then I didn't want to waste them either. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to keep a bunch of blank paper in the back. Why don't I create a top tab so I could just turn to blank paper in the back. And you could see this is a remnant hole from where the original um, divider holes, or excuse me, where the regular original dividers were punched for um, regular standard size binder, but I don't care. It works great for my purposes. And these are plastic. They're poly, so they're going to be really heavy duty. And back here, all I have is a bunch of printer paper. I, I bought a ream of printer paper for seven bucks and again had the, the person in Office Depot literally just cut it in half for me and then hole punched that as well. And I use this for jotting down ideas, if I need a quick sheet of paper for a list, for um, chapter notes, illustrations, sketches, so on and so forth. That is just what that's for. And then back here, I've just got a couple little uh, mini size sheet protectors for things I wanna keep safe, which I don't have yet. But I have been working in this binder now for several weeks and I have to say it is getting me out of the planning mode and more into the producing mode <laughs> in terms of writing at my computer. So I think I'm gonna stick with this system for a little bit because man, it has really helped me out. And I hope this video has helped you out with a few tips, tricks, ideas, whether it be about writing or about planning or creating your own planning system just using a regular old mini three ring binder. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, give me a quick thumbs up, leave a comment below. If you've got any planner or even writing ideas or writing questions, leave those in the comments below as well. Until the next video, I will catch you next time. Bye-bye.